Sports Animation. Every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Here I am, Dad. You used to call me. Yes, girl. Come and sit down. Daughter? As you know, I've aged, and now I've become very weak. Yes, I know, Daddy. I'm glad you're aware of that. With that in mind, I'd like to entrust you with our family's legacy. The one that our ancestors also bequeathed to me through my father, who is your grandfather. Okay, Dad. But as far as I know, you don't have any inheritable property. I've got more than the gear, girl. I want you to take over our family's gift of healing. You wouldn't want me to become a healer as a woman, would you? Of course it is. This will be your fate, my daughter. You're the only child I have left alive. And you have no choice but to assume your duty to the gods. There's a lot of life to care for, and to help. Our ancestors will act through you. Dad, I'm not really interested in what you're offering. I don't think it will fit. I can't take over. I've just had a baby and I don't even have enough time for myself and my family. Sincerely, I can't. Oh, uh, You want to disobey the ancestors who placed their precious choice on you? Do you think you have a choice? I'll tell you what's going to happen right after I die so that you're prepared. That's all there is to it. Because in the real world, the ancestors don't warn you, and don't ask the chosen ones. They choose you, and they give you all the power you need to do whatever they want. Really? Yes, my daughter. But don't be afraid. Really? Welcome to a story where the darkest secrets are revealed. Sarah, a healer who inherited a powerful gift from her father, uses her powers in unexpected ways. With her daughter, Marie, she engages in a dangerous game, harvesting men's semen for strange rituals. But this practice comes at a price. What is it Sarah? Why are you crying? My father just dropped us. You mean he's dead? Yes. What is it? Who is it? Sarah, my daughter. It's time for you to take over from your father. Who are you? Please leave me in peace. From now on, there's no barrier between you and us. You can ask us for anything you want. And we, too, will need you to live. We'll need your help to enter this world of the living. I don't understand. Who the hell are you? Aren't you going to tell me? I am what I am. Get up, and go do what your spirit tells you. See you soon. Is this a dream, or reality? A spirit just spoke to me. Since that day, Sarah has never been the same. She had changed a lot in the way she interacted and behaved with people. She had become powerful and even authoritarian at times. She began by practicing the ancestral legacy left to her by her father. She cured all types of incurable disease and complicity with her spirits. A few years later, her husband Isaac left her alone with her daughter, to find a new life elsewhere, because he could no longer stand Sarah's lifestyle. Sarah was left to raise her child alone. Here I am, Mom. Sit down, girl. I have a proposal that could benefit you and me. Talk, Mom. I'm listening. You yourself know that it's been a good 15 years since your father abandoned us. 
Life here in the village is getting harder and harder for us. My job as a healer isn't feeding us. We're going to have to find an alternative to survive. So I'm going to propose that we move to Kinshasa. Kinshasa? But why in town and not in another village? If we're going to have lots of opportunities, we're going to have to be in town, and close to the people who'll need my healing services. Over there, people have money, but that's not the case here in the village, or even in neighboring villages. You're not wrong, Mom. I could even use the opportunity to continue my university studies. Exactly. We'll have a better life there. Okay, Mom. Sometime later, Sarah and her daughter moved to the city. Once in Kinshasa, Sarah started out in various small businesses. She sold traditional products, cola nuts and potions, and prepared traditional remedies to strengthen men. She also treated hemorrhoids, a disease she felt particularly afflicted men. Her business was thriving, and she was beginning to enjoy a good clientele, but like all human beings, Sarah's first taste of money was to be a good one. Happy arrival, ma'am. What can I do for you? Save my home, ma'am. It's been five years since I got married and I've never had a miscarriage. Please help me have a child. If not, my husband wants to take a second wife. You have a small problem. I'll help you. Really? Of course. I'll just make you a bath, give you a few potions, and you're all set. Don't panic. Don't panic. All right, thank you, ma'am. We'll start the treatment this very evening. And I guarantee that by the end of this month you'll be pregnant. I'll be indebted to you for the rest of my life, if what you say is true. I promise, ma'am. You'll be satisfied. Okay. Welcome, sir. How can I help you? I heard about you from one of my colleagues at work. He told me you're a great healer. That's why I came to see you. I see. Have a seat. What can I do for you, sir? I would like you to cure my sexual impotence. Okay, I see. It's a small matter for me. I can cure you. Thank you very much. My ancestors, I turn to you imploring your help for the healing of all these people who have come to see me for their satisfaction. I count on you to help me heal them. Receive my offerings my ancestors. Welcome my daughter. Your requests are taken into account, but... What can I do to satisfy your wishes, my ancestors? We need the energy of the people who come to you for treatment to feed ourselves too. We are not just going to help you heal them. We're hungry too, and we need to get them things in return. What do you want to take from them? From now on, you'll give us men semen before we help you cure them. But I can't ask the patients who come to see me to donate their semen in addition to the money they pay me. They'll panic. We don't even want to know who the semen comes from. All we want is the semen of men. No matter the origin. But it's not over yet. Okay, what else do you want? You must allow us to create illnesses before curing them. Because nothing is created. I didn't quite understand Queen Mother. Every time we treat a sick person, we have to take something from them and give it back to others in need. In other words, if we treat a woman for infertility, for example, we can take that woman's star and use it to treat another person with financial or marriage problems. We need to take something valuable from your patients before treating them. Okay. It will be all. Come on in. Mom. You're obviously very tired to still be in bed at this hour. I went to bed a little late. That's why. I knew it. I've seen you when he dropped you off. Oh? Don't worry, it's nothing. 
I need your help my daughter. Really? Yes, my daughter. I hope you're not going to ask me to inherit your healing gifts, are you? I'm not going to accept. I'm warning you at the same time. No, my daughter. I'm not. I know you wouldn't want. All right, then. So how can I be of service to you? I hope you're still protecting yourself with the men you meet, eh? Of course, but why do you ask? Is this the help you wanted from me? Your question is weird. I know my question sounds a bit awkward for you, but I wanted you to bring me the semen of the man you're going with. Mom? But it's disgusting what you're telling me, Mom. Look, it's for our survival. We need to treat more people to make more money. We have rent to pay, and we have to eat. Because life here in the city is very expensive. What does what you're asking have to do with treating people? I need these seeds for my remedies. But how is this possible? Anyway, I don't know how to help you get what you want. Whenever you meet a man you like, or if a man comes after you, never forget to protect yourself. But when you're protecting yourself, bring me back what you've harvested. I'll use it to make remedies to heal other men's backs. Is what you're asking me normal? But what's the problem? In any case, it'll end up in a toilet somewhere, and it won't do any good. Might as well use them to save lives. Besides, it doesn't end. Really? Yes, my daughter. We only save lives to feed ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, we will be blessed by our ancestors. I've prepared a special soap that will help you attract good men of value. Wherever you go, you're the only one who'll be seen. Even in front of the miss of the world, you'll be man's favorite. From that day on, it became a habit for Marie to bring back whatever her mother asked for, and Sarah's clientele continued to grow. People came for all kinds of treatments. The women get in line. Especially the Tizer. To be washed so they're more visible, more attractive and more likely to get married. Others came to solve design problems, and so on, without knowing that they were losing something in return. Hello my beauties. Apparently this gentleman is looking at me. I think it's more me. Let me prove you wrong. Here I am, sir. But I didn't call you Mademoiselle. Weren't you looking at me? No, it's not you. Call me Sunni or third with lipsticks. I'm not your errand girl. Easy. Do you notice anything strange about Marie? What did she do? I have the impression that she attracts all the men to himself. Every time she's with us, we go unnoticed. All eyes are on her. It's because she's beautiful. What a beauty. Is she more beautiful than me, or more than you? Beauty is relative, sister. In any case, it's her aura that's strong. I think she's taking away what belongs to us. It's not normal. Do you think so? Yes. Good evening, miss. Yes, good evening. Wasn't it you I met a few days ago with two other girls? I think so. Thank God for that. Save me. Uh-uh. What's the matter with you? Besides, you ignored me last time. I've been calling your friend Florence for days, but I can't get through. She seems to have blocked me. Who's Florence you're talking about? I don't have any girlfriends by that name. I'm talking about your girlfriend who I went home with last time. Isn't her name Florence? So that's the name she gave you? Isn't that her real name? So what's her name? If she gave you that name, that means that's what she calls herself. Anyway. As I've seen you now, it's your foot my foot. You must take me to her. What? Uh-uh. Was that me who united you before? I'm telling you she's no longer reachable. I don't know what your girlfriend did to me. But since we've been intimate, my bazooka doesn't work at all. But if it doesn't work, turn it on. 
My God, what's hard to understand about what I'm telling you? I'm telling you I've lost the use of my bazooka. Am I a sexologist? Go deal with your stories amongst yourselves. In fact, my friend has left the country. She's gone. How are you, Marie? A moment ago. Ah, yes. I had a few things to do. It took me a while. If not, I'm fine. And how are you yourself? It's going. Rose. Hello, everyone. Happy arrival, Rose. Marie. Your guy from last time is looking for you with red eyes. Who are you talking about? The one to whom he said your name was Florence. He says you're unapproachable. I don't have time for him anymore. I can see. He said that since he'd met you, he'd become impotent. What have I got to do with it? Who knows, maybe it's when he sees you that it works. <laughs> It really makes me laugh. He's a weirdo. How can I be responsible for what happens to him? Marie had no idea how serious this man's story was. Without knowing it, she was the source of the misfortunes of the many men whose semen she collected. Many of them developed incurable diseases, without ever understanding why. All it took was one night with Marie to turn their lives into a nightmare. But one day, among all these men, Marie fell in love. This boy was different, and she was truly in love with him. They started dating, but despite her feelings, she continued to collect his semen to bring to her mother. Happy arrival, my darling. Thank you. What's wrong with you? It's always my hemorrhoid problem that bothers me. I am so sorry. I have already been to every hospital without finding a solution. I can't even sit down without spotting myself. Really? From a certain point on, this boy began to develop inexplicable illnesses, illnesses that had no name. He could no longer sit up normally, was in excruciating pain. Is he feeling better? No, my friend. It's getting worse every day. As we speak, he can no longer walk or sit. Even his bazooka, which used to rise normally, no longer works at all. This story really stinks. I'd advise you to stay away from him so he doesn't infect you. I love her. You can't understand my girlfriend. Since I was born, I've never met a man who met all my criteria. I can't abandon her in her illness. Do you want to die? But why doesn't your mom heal him? Isn't she a healer? He refused. Even his parents are against going to a healer. They are very religious. But your mother doesn't do anything mystical. Besides, she's a Christian too. Isn't she, though? Yes, she goes to church. That's all there is to it. So there's no downside. I think you have to convince them to let you take him to your mother's for treatment. Trust me, girlfriend. They've already turned this down. It's no longer an option. Tomorrow, if all goes well, I'd like to call on a pastor. May God be merciful to him. Why are you so sad, my daughter? What's the matter? What are you missing? Things are better for us now. This is no time to be sad. Get money to pay for what you want. I don't want anything, Mom. But what's wrong? What did you do to my boyfriend, Roger? What did I do to him? What kind of question is that? Ever since I brought you his semen, he's been getting sick. He develops strange diseases. What does his illness have to do with me? I think you need to explain to me exactly what you're doing with the semens I'm bringing you. Because now I'm confused. I think I've already explained what I do with it, haven't I? Why are you still asking me this question? Because deep down something tells me that his illness is linked to you. Don't get me in trouble. I don't know anything about his illness. My own daughter calls me a witch. Who says you're a witch? I just want to understand what's going on. I don't know anything about what you're saying, girl. 
I'm sorry about your friend's health. I can't hurt them. All I do is save lives. I'm really sorry I had impure thoughts about you. Don't worry, I forgive you. Thanks, Mom. But since your friend is ill and you can't get any more semen, aren't you thinking of getting me some elsewhere? I really need it. No, I'm not into that stuff anymore. I refuse to cheat on my boyfriend just to satisfy you. How do you want me to do it now? You'll have to get it yourself. As of today, I'm no longer in this life of impudence. What's the matter with you? You want to drop me at the last minute? Do you want us to run out of food? I said no and I won't. Okay. No, I don't believe in my mother. I don't know why I can't trust her. It's as if she's the cause of Roger's unhappiness. Maybe the other men I had known also had the same problems now. Oh, my God. I hope that's not the case. My conscience is so heavy. I can't sleep. I think I'll confess to a pastor. I need to clear my conscience. Besides, I haven't prayed or gone to church for a long time now because of my life of fornication. I think I need to reconcile with my God to have peace of heart. I invoke you, my ancestors. Your daughter has come to consult you. Happy arrival, my daughter. Help me, my ancestors. My daughter refuses to obey me. She suspects me of being the cause of her boyfriend's illness. How dare she disobey you? You have to stop her from shining the light that's inside her. But what do I have to do to stop her, Queen Mother? Confuses his head. Confusing his head how Queen Mother? Let her go mad and wander. She'll whore her way through life until she dies. But I can't do such a thing to my daughter. If you can't do it, we'll do it for you. What my daughter wants to get into. Whoever put my son in this state will never have peace in his life. They are destroying the only son I have left. What have I done to deserve this? Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Leave that Hail Mary, Mom. Let's go see an exorcist, or a pastor to help us in prayer. What Roger has is no longer at this level. You think so? Yes, Mom. We cry out to you today, Lord, for Roger. I break every spiritual chain that assails him in the mighty name of Jesus. May every spirit of sickness, oppression and curse that has plagued his life be bound and cast into outer darkness. Lord God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I come before you this day to intercede for your servant Roger. You are the God who delivers and heals, and we know that nothing is impossible with you. Your word declares in Psalm 34, 17. When the righteous cry out, the Lord hears, and delivers them from all their troubles. Lord, I ask for divine protection for Roger. Surround him with your glory, cover him with your precious blood and may every plan of the enemy be nullified in Jesus' name. May Roger be restored in body, soul and spirit. We take authority in your name, Jesus Christ, and declare that Roger is free. For you said in John 8.36, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We believe in this promise and proclaim Roger's victory over all the forces of darkness. Thank you Lord for your deliverance, healing and protection. We give you all the glory and honor, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you pastor for your prayers but I think it's already late. He was already dead. My God. How is he, pastor? It's complicated, young lady. What is it pastor? What happened to my son? The doctor just confirmed that your son had even died before I arrived at the hospital. I'm finished. Death come kill me too. I refuse. My son cannot die. I refuse. I don't want it. I refuse it. The pastor's prayers had failed to bring this young man back to life and deliver him. He had died of his illness. 
very sad. What is it, young lady? I was told you wanted to see me. Yes, Pastor. I have a confession to make. Really? Yes, Pastor. Marie has just confessed everything to the pastor about what she was doing with her mother. My God. Young girl, you're part of a ritual with your mother. Really? Yes, your mom will have to confess. She has to tell the truth. Take me to her. My mother is a faithful member of your church. What? Your mom's a Christian? Yes, Pastor. I don't believe it. Is it true what your daughter said about you? Does she bring you the semen of men? Yes, Pastor. But what are you doing with this? I... Sarah hadn't even finished confessing before she choked and died in front of the pastor. Now the battle has begun. After taking Sarah's life, the spirits unfortunately turned against Marie and even the pastor's family. At the same time, Roger's mother, frustrated as she was, wanted to avenge her child's death. Everything became complicated and bizarre. Please mom, forget about your revenge story. It's against God's will. Really? Where was God, when she and her mama were sacrificing my boy? Was it? My only boy. Calm down, mom. I refuse. She won't live either. Please, mommy. Don't go and do something bad. Oh yes, it is. Mom, what will she do now? Sarah? Sarah? I'm calling you're still here right now. Welcome to the home of your ancestors. You're one of us now. Go! We sent you to haunt the pastor and his family. It's because of them that you're no longer among the living. Go. Uh -uh. I had put my shoes down right next to the bed before going out. She's melting on my table. Isn't this my little sister Olivia's work? What are you doing in my room, Olivia? I didn't set foot in your room, did I, big sister? Liar. You'd better tell me the truth or I'm gonna tell dad. Uh-uh. I didn't go into your room, I said. And who put my shoes on my table if not you? It's not me. Liar. Big sister spilled my yogurt on the floor. But why did she do it? Why did you spill my yogurt on the floor? Your mean is a witch. Are you calling me a witch? I won't allow you to talk to me like that anymore. You have to buy my yogurt. Stop lying to my face. Little sister. What's wrong with you? My god, what's happening to you? How did you get our children to this point? You're supposed to take good care of them when I'm not around. You're just a bad mother. Paul? Are you calling me a bad mother? You yourself are the bad father. Am I a slave to you and your children? I won't let you talk to me like that anymore. Next time you dare to insult me again I'll break you. Oh? But what did I just say? Are you sure it's you talking? You sound like you've become Jackishan or Jokelinshan. I'm sorry. I think a spirit has entered our family intimacy. Where's my daughter? Your daughter is completely anemic. We are treating her. Bring her to me at once. And I order you to stop all treatment. There's nothing wrong with my daughter. It's all an illusion. Oh? All the mighty Lord, creator of heaven and earth, you who rule over every spirit and every power, I address you today with unshakable faith. For, as it is written, he who dwells under the shelter of the Most High rests under the shadow of the Almighty. I say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Lord, I stand before you, 
not by my strength, but by your power, to break every chain and destroy every work of darkness in my family. I ask you to send your mighty angels to surround us and protect every member of my family. For the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he snatches them from danger. Let these angels arise, and fight on our behalf, for the battle belongs to the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for battle. Lord, I rely on you to win this spiritual battle. May your purifying fire consume all that is not of you. May your precious blood, shed for us on the cross, cover every member of this family and deliver us from all evil. We proclaim your victory, Lord Jesus, for you triumphed over the powers of darkness at the cross. As it says in Psalm 18, 2, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. We proclaim your lordship over our home, and give you all the glory for the deliverance and peace you now bring. We praise you, Lord, for you are faithful and powerful. You are our refuge and our strength. May your name be glorified forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Where will I find my mom now? God knows what she's doing to that girl. Why do I have a voice telling me to go to our construction site? Why? I'll go to the site to see what's going on. Please forgive me. You're going to kill me. Please, I didn't know that's what my mother did with men's semen. No, she didn't. She knew very well. Hit her. Kill that girl. All right, ma'am. Zangidi. Let's taste this girl first before we finish her off. Yes, let's go. Mom. But what are you doing here? What are you doing? You paid brigands to murder Marie? You're getting as dark as the darkness. Leave here. This fight doesn't concern you. Jesus Christ. My God. Am I the one committing this heinous act? Madam, we also have to execute the second girl, don't we? Get out of here before I call the police on you. Murderers. Oh. Stop crying. I'm taking you to the hospital. Lord, I thank you for your mercy despite the evil that I and my lineage have committed. I wish my mother were still alive to repent of her sins, but you willed otherwise. I thank you for my deliverance, for I know that the ancestral link that bound me to the entities in my family is broken, and that I will no longer suffer this curse. It's all over now. I am the last victim of these dark ties. They will no longer affect my children, nor my great-grandchildren. I resolve that I, and my house, shall be consecrated to you forever. Amen. And so this animation ends with Mary's generational prayer of deliverance. This tragic story reminds us just how much the forces of evil can influence our lives when we stray from the light. Sarah, using occult practices, destroyed not only her own life, but those of many innocent people. Sarah, though a churchgoer, was actually a source of misfortune for many. Her involvement in occult practices led to lives being sacrificed, including that of Roger, the fiancé of her own daughter, Marie. Some evildoers hide behind appearances of piety, using faith as a mask for their nefarious deeds. But this story also shows the power of redemption and forgiveness. Roger's mother, blinded by grief and the thirst for revenge, almost committed the irreparable. But thanks to divine intervention and her daughter's unconditional love, she was able to free herself from the chains that held her captive. This teaches us that, despite the mistakes of the past, it is always possible to find the right path, to ask for forgiveness, and to choose life over destruction. My dear brothers and sisters, let's remember that vengeance only leads to loss. 
but forgiveness and love are the real forces that break curses. Let us never let hatred take root in our hearts, for it only breeds unhappiness. Instead, let love and compassion guide our actions to build a better future, free from the shackles of the past. Amen. Don't forget to comment, like and share this animation. Even if you have nothing to write, a simple like is enough. May God bless us and keep malevolent entities away from our families. Bye.